like a lot of people have asked me can i come into the united states with my dependents yeah you can you can come into the united states with your husband with your wife with your kids yeah hello how are you doing today hope you're doing great my name is esther and thank you for joining me on my channel if this is your first time seeing my face i would love to connect with you please leave some comments below tell me your name and where you're watching from today i am filming from the united states of america this is where i live and i completed my master's degree here as well so on this channel i share with you all of the information that you need to know about studying in the united states moving to the united states and even to other countries from wherever you are so join us here by subscribing and also hitting the notification bell so that you get notified whenever i share new information and here i share with you scholarship opportunities visa tips some of the scholarship opportunities i share with you they are really time sensitive so you need to subscribe and get notified so that you can take advantage of all of these opportunities as soon as as you get updated yes we also have a telegram group where we answer all of your questions and you can also get to connect to people that are on the same journey as you i'll leave the link below in the description box check that out and join us also join us on our instagram follow my stories i share scholarship opportunities as they come up and like i said this information they are time sensitive you need to grab them as soon as they pop up so follow us on instagram and ensure to always check our instagram story yeah so today guys some of you have come to me that you want to study in the United States but you have no clue about what to do you don't know the steps to take you don't even understand the requirements that you need to have you want to come but you need guidance so today I will be making this video to share with you all of this information and we'll go step by step through all of the stages that you need to go through if you want to study in the United States don't go anywhere today we'll be discussing all that you need to know and I'll be right back You guys are still here thanks for not clicking out thanks for not going away so today i'm going to be sharing with you all that you need to know you don't need to rush don't go anywhere ensure that you watch this video to the very end because i believe that by the end of this video you would have gotten a good understanding of all that you need to know and how you need to prepare if you want to come study in the united states so first and foremost we'll be starting with the application cycles application cycles are different from school to school however in the united states there are three school semesters we have the spring semester which usually starts from like january to like april may we have the summer semester summer is a very short semester and it is not even a full school semester like most courses are not usually available in the summer semester so courses in summer semester are usually very few they are usually very few and so most schools don't even receive admission for summer so summer is out of it but you just need to know summer runs from like uh, may to like uh, august july the fast from school to school it's usually very short like i said then the last semester is fall semester fall semester is from august in most schools like december some starts theirs in september but most schools begin fall semester in august but you just get an idea of all of this so if you want to come into the united states you can decide whenever you want to come between fall and spring like i said most schools don't receive admission for summer so summer is out of it i just shared it so that you have a good understanding of how school runs in the united states so if you want to come plan to come in feb in january or in august but that you want to come in january or august does not mean that's when you apply to schools you need to apply way way ahead like right now this is september 2022 schools are already receiving applications for fall 2023 admissions right now most schools have closed the application for spring 2023 admissions so that tells you that you need to apply way way ahead some schools have rolling admissions rolling admission means that you can apply at any time of the year to come into their school however they will tell you that oh you should apply probably like two months before the semester that you intend to come in they usually don't have deadlines so if you want to come in for fall they can say apply two months before fall if you want to come for spring they'll say apply two months before spring but i would recommend that you apply way way ahead because there are still a lot of stages that you need to go through so you need time to complete all of these stages and also obtain your visa before you are able to come into the united states those are the application cycles that you need to know in the united states and like i said schools have varying deadlines so ensure that whatever school you want to apply to check their page um keep in mind the application deadline application deadline they will tell you all the things that you need to complete by that date if you need to complete just the online application or if you need to submit 
other requirements so after discussing this application cycle let us discuss our requirements to study in the united states requirements to study in the united states will depend on what uh, educational level you want to study at if you are studying at the undergraduate level that's like for your bachelor's your requirement to differ from if you want to study at the graduate level which can either be masters or phd level for the purpose of this video we would assume that you want to study at the graduate level which can be masters or phd for undergrad i'll probably put a list of general requirements on the page so that we don't waste much time but for graduate students uh, let's discuss the things that you will need number one is to complete an online application on the school's website sometimes some school will require a fee for it sometimes they will give you a fee waiver and some schools may not give you waiver some schools don't waive the application fee an application fee in the united states might range from like 30 dollars 50 dollars even up to like 180 dollars so one of the ways for you to save money is to look for these application fee waivers i have shared some before on my channel i'll link the video in the description box check that out and as time goes on i'll still be sharing more with you so stay plugged to the channel so that you can take advantage of this opportunity so once you complete your application on the website or whatever site the school has directed you to the next thing you might be required to submit is your transcript your transcript might be official or unofficial so uh the unofficial ones are the ones that you probably have gotten from your university it's not been evaluated it's not been translated into anything it's just like that some schools can accept that to process your admission however after admission they would require to submit the evaluated and official transcripts before you resume so check out for that when you are reading requirements on the pages of any university you are applying to so evaluated transcript means that the transcript that you have obtained from your university you need to submit it to an evaluation body to convert it to a u.s equivalent of the grade so for all of the courses that you have taken in your undergrad you will convert them grade by grade grade by grade even the class of degree that you've graduated with they will convert it to obtain the u.s equivalent because in the united states the grade point system is a 4.0 average whereas in some countries like nigeria we have 7.0 we have 5.0 in some schools and we even have 4.0 in some schools so these evaluation bodies that's what they do they convert from all of these uh different gpa to the one that is acceptable in the united states so check if the university you're applying to requires you to evaluate or not and i've actually shared all the costs that you need to take note of in another video i'll put the link in the description box so check that out i won't be discussing so much about costs in this video so as to avoid repetition so transcript is something else you need to submit then the third thing you might be required to submit will be letters of recommendation so letters of recommendation will be specified by the school they will tell you what category of people need to give you these recommendation letters some might require your professors from your undergrad to give you some might require just family and friends some might require your bosses and work so pay attention to what is required so that you can submit the right letters it will also tell you the number of letters that they require another thing outside of this is a statement of purpose or motivation letter so for the statement of purpose some schools require some don't require it so also check like i said the united states we have over 1000 in fact i think we have over 6000 schools in the united states <laughs> don't quote me guys i'm not sure but i know that we have a lot of schools in the united states so all of their requirements varies so if you want to save yourself some stress you can first filter the list of schools that you want to apply based on all of these criteria i know the competition varies across these schools for some schools their acceptance rate can be as high as 70 something percent and some the acceptance rate is like six percent so they are more competitive than the other but whichever one you choose ensure that you understand and you're able to meet up all the requirements in order to secure admission letters of recommendation like i said you will be told how many letters or how many words sorry how many words to submit for that ensure that you write a very strong statement of purpose because this can be a disqualifying factor for your admission outside of that most schools actually would require these things that i've mentioned to give you an admission decision some might require uh, extra things like maybe a gre score or test of english for gre i know that most business schools would not exempt it so you will need to write the gre or gmat exam you need to write that and ensure that you pass the uh, average score that is required to meet up admission so when you write that you need to submit it to the school the school will indicate the mailing address or where you need to send your scores to some also require that you do a test of english that is if your undergraduate education is not in english and with all of these things schools will evaluate and give you admission or not give you admission so if you've gotten admission the next thing you might be required to submit is your proof of support and financial affidavits 
some schools might require that to also evaluate or give you admission but most schools usually require that after they've given you admission so if you're obtaining scholarship from the school you may not be required to submit that but if you are sponsoring from external sources outside the school and you are sponsoring yourself you will need to provide your bank statement which is a proof of support and a financial affidavit which is a notary stamped document of how you intend to pay your tuition fees so check for all of these things and provide them uh, with your proof of support and a financial affidavit the school then will issue you an i-20 so not to mix things up let me just quickly discuss the steps the steps now you submit your online application i mentioned how to do that on the school's website you submit all your transcript letters of recommendation all the requirements that you need for admission after you obtain your admission then provide your proof of financial support and financial affidavit next you will now get your i-20 on your i-20 your means of financing your education will be indicated your fees total fees will be indicated on one side and the other side the school will break down how your finance is going to work for your tuition then you also have your service id indicated on your i-20 you need a service id as an international student in the united states to apply for your visa interview so you will need to apply for your visa interview in your local u.s embassy yeah so you need to fill a ds-160 ds-160 is your non-immigrant application for visa you feel that and you also attend your visa interview i have shared a number of tips and even questions and answers to help you prepare and nail your visa interview once just like i did on my channel i'll also leave links to this video in the description box to ensure that you check all of them out so that you can be well informed so now you've gotten your admission and by grace of god you have gotten your visa what next you are good to come into the united states just pay for your ticket get on the next available flight and resume for school so in the united states you're allowed to come into the united states 30 days before resumption of your program anything before 30 days you'll be denied at the port of entry so take note of that you can't come into the united states before 30 days to your program start date you're only allowed to come in within 30 days so ensure that you bear that in mind and with all of this that we have discussed next thing for you to know like a lot of people have asked me can i come into the united states with my dependents yeah you can you can come into the united states with your husband with your wife with your kids yeah but you should know that you coming into the united states to study actually you are coming as an f1 visa category order and your dependents will be coming in as f2 f2 visa orders in the united states are not allowed to work it is illegal so if you're coming with your husband your wife your kids they cannot work you as the only one allowed to work and even your work has restriction as an f1 student in the united states you're only allowed to work on campus for a maximum of 20 hours weekly so you cannot work outside of your campus you can only work on campus so you want to evaluate and ensure that this decision is the best for your family before coming into the united states that's why a lot of people will decide to come alone and bring their family members later but some people feel like it's okay for them they'll manage and then they come in together so do whatever is best for you and how do you finance your education in the united states for international students you can finance your education through scholarships some get scholarship even before they come into the united states like if you apply to schools that give tuition scholarships you can have your tuition waived even before you resume your program so in that case you don't need to come into the united states with lots of money to pay tuition or anything all of that has been undoed for you so that is uh internal scholarships offered by the school and outside of that some schools will give you graduate assistantship graduate assistantship is a way to, for you to render service to the school and in exchange a part of your tuition or full tuition is waived and then you also earn stipends so graduate assistantship can come in form of teaching research support lab work like a lot of different work you are basically assisting a lecturer you are attached to a lecturer and you are doing whatever work that has been assigned to you by that lecturer it can be you taking classes on behalf of the lecturer grading script or even uh, supervising projects whatever it is that is what it is so in exchange for that like i mentioned your fees can be waived uh some will waive your full tuition some will waive a certain part of it and you also earn monthly stipends so from that monthly stipends you can pay for your rent you can pay your bills and you can also feed yourself and your family don't 
have <laughs> eye oops. Some of these type pens are not so much. I think the max I've seen so far for master's level is usually like 2k per month, thousand dollars per month. I know I think PhD students earn more than that. So bear that in mind, don't get your hopes up. Another opportunity for you to get your tuition finance in the United States is to apply for loans. I know some people have gone for the Empire loans and all of that. I don't know so much about it. I may not recommend it, but if you feel like it's good for you, you can consider it. All right, so outside of loans, you also want to look at uh, external scholarships. There are some scholarship boards that are not affiliated with any schools, but give scholarship for international students to study in the United States. Like we have the Fulbright scholarship. There's this one for women as well i've forgotten the name i put it on the screen but this scholarship they usually have their different condition different terms and condition like the one i was mentioning for women they usually require you to study in the united states and after your program go back to your own country so if this is a condition you are willing to comply with definitely go for this scholarship so there are a lot of scholarships out there i've been sharing some of them on my channel and i'll continue to, to share them so don't miss out on them ensure that you subscribe to my channel so that you get notified about these scholarship opportunities and also even within the United States when you come on campus there are some departments that offer scholarship from time to time they might not offer it at the time you come in but maybe based on the funding they've received for that academic year they can put out scholarships so watch out for departmental scholarships and also watch out for uh, scholarship from professional associations so if you join let's say you are studying like uh, engineering in the United States and you join like Nesby they usually have scholarship opportunities also look out for bodies like Togood Marshall there are a number of them I've shared some of these things already on my channel so watch all my videos especially those on that study and live in america playlist you don't want to miss out on all of the information so basically these are all the things that you need to know and you need to bear in mind as you prepare to come study in the united states so now you can ask when do you start your journey the decision is up to you decide when it's convenient for you to come to the united states do you want to come in january or do you want to come in august so if you want to come in january like we said it's for spring so make a list of all the schools that you're interested in and like i always advise ensure that you apply to as many schools as possible some will provide your application whatever take advantage of that to apply to many schools because some might give you admission and no funding some might not even give you admission but at the end of the day you have a number of choices to choose from so ensure that you do what's good for you so that's all i have to share with you today if you have any questions about all the things i've mentioned please let me know in the description box below how <laughs> in the comment section rather i'd love to read from you don't forget as well to join our telegram community and i'll see you soon guys take care bye